Welcome to PowerPoint 2010 Audio and Video Editing. I'm Trainer Lori. What is audio and video editing? This is allowing you to trim inserted video right in PowerPoint, including YouTube. I'm going to show you how to do that, even though that's um, you have to actually do it in code. We're also going to trim recorded audio, which is a lot easier uh, than video, and trim MP3 and end on time. If so if you have music associated with your PowerPoint presentation, you can end it on time. We'll find our tools um, in two places. One, you can go to Home New Slide and you'll see Insert Media Clip, or we can go to Insert Video. And we're talking about right now video from file. We'll be talking about video from website in just a minute. Then you go find your video and click Insert. It can insert from a lot of different file types, so um, including AVI. When we first insert our video, this is what it looks like. It has this, um, it's, it's big and black, and it has a, a, a play button at the bottom, and it will show you the elapsed time. And if you play it, if you hit the play button, then it will turn to a pause button, and you can uh, actually watch it. While you're watching it, if there's a point where you would like it to start and stop from, there's a tool called the bookmark. And when you click that, it will put this yellow dot uh, wherever you've clicked it. So it'll help you remember when you go to trim it later. Now that we're in trim video, you can either uh, find that spot again, knowing exactly where it is, or you can trim it uh, using the trim tools. The green is video start and the red obviously is video end. You can click and drag those so that it starts and ends anywhere you want. What you can do is trim off the beginning and the end. What you cannot do is trim out some of the middle. You can simply trim off the beginning and the end and leave whatever you want in the middle. The blue uh, icon here is the current play point. So that will move as you're playing the video. And then you have the option to pause at any time. But if we just want the bird portion, uh, you can trim off the, the ending. See how I've, I've moved the, the ending over? And then uh, you can have it just now. It's 2.721 seconds. So that 30 second video is now turned into uh, less than three seconds. You do have the option of fade in and fade out, but look, let me show you what it looks like. You can see that it, what it means is fade from the beginning of the video to the end of the video, uh, which I think is a little confusing. Usually what we want for fade in and fade out is fade through black. So a better option for that would be uh, transitions, where you can fade the entire slide, or animations, where you can fade just the, um, the, the uh, video itself. So uh, you, it, you don't get that double uh, shadow effect. Now when you go to play it, you have some more options. Uh, for example, volume. Uh, you can certainly, uh, if you're going to be playing this from your laptop and you want people to hear it, you'll probably want to turn that volume up. Uh, sometimes you don't want any volume at all. You just want to show uh, it, so you might mute it. You can also choose to have it start on click, which is the default. But here's a big problem that I found. I've watched presentations where people don't have access to the computer. Uh, they've uh, put it on a thumb drive and somebody else has taken it somewhere and all the presenter has is a, um, a remote to advance the slides. And now they can't click the start button. Without that um, mouse, they're not going to be able to start it. So you definitely, in that case, you would want the option to start it automatically. And that turns it into uh, an animation option. And your animation pane comes open, and it will show you uh, these animation ver uh, options. They're already in built in there. One is to pause it, and the other is to play it. And that's what you would want if you're going to have it start automatically. That means when I click, if I do happen to click on the video, it will pause it, and then it will continue it again. So instead of it starting over every time I click it, it'll simply pause it. So th that's a really good tool. Make sure you use that if you may not have access to a remote. If you play full screen, then it, uh, it, you don't see any of the background. You, you'll only see black if the uh, image isn't big enough to cover the whole monitor. And you have the option to hide while not playing. So whatever your background is will show instead. So you won't see that square uh, black uh, video image. Once you've inserted video, that's a good idea to compress the media. And you have to determine what's it for. 
Now, if you want to insert video from a website, first you must go to that website and find the share option. Uh, for example, on YouTube it says share, and then the embed option. You click that, and it will show you code. Here, this is critical. Uh, even in PowerPoint 2010, make sure you use old embed code. It's a different kind of code that PowerPoint can read, and it has lots more code in it. Uh, we then copy that code. This is the code up here. You copy it, and once you've copied it, then you go to insert in the PowerPoint and insert video from website, and this is where you uh, paste that code. Now we do have some options. Uh, for example, when we go to playback, the only option we have is play and all of our tools to trim the video is gone now. We do have the option to start it automatically and to hide while not playing. The problem with start automatically, it still will not start automatically because there's some code in there to overwrite that. So what we want to do is change that code. This is the code that you would have if you were to copy it, for example. This is a, uh, one of my YouTubes. And uh, so you can see this is what the code looks like. It looks a little daunting, but don't worry about it. All we worry about is this, uh, the information that starts after the word value and ends before the second set of quotes. When we uh, can see that, then you want to insert some more code in there to make it start automatically. When we look at that, we're going to add ampersand start equal, and then you have to choose a number to put in there, and then ampersand end equal, and then again you choose a number to put in there. So what is that number? Well, if we looked at our video, and I want it to start here, that's 3 minutes and 29 seconds. So 209 seconds is 3 minutes and 29 seconds. And how do I get that? <laughs> 3 minutes times 60 plus 29. Okay, and similar with the end. You would determine where the end is going to be and then you do the same calculation. And so you put it in as seconds. So that's what that is. 209 is the seconds uh, into the video that you wanted to start in your PowerPoint presentation. You can also code to make it autoplay. And you could put this before or after the um, the length, so don't worry about that. And again, in uh, after value and before the double set, uh, the second set of double quotes, you would put in semicolon autoplay equals one. That means yes, you want it to autoplay. And uh, so when you put that in, it will automatically play, and you don't have to worry about clicking a button. So it moves from having that start button strictly from the black to playing. When you insert audio, it's very similar to inserting video, a little easier actually. And you can insert from all these different kinds of files. You can also record your own audio and it becomes one of these files and then you can just uh, edit it at that point. So you insert your audio and instead of looking like a picture, it just becomes a little horn icon. And again, you can hit the play button and uh, you can also have the option to fast, fast forward it. When you right click on it, you have the option to trim audio, or when you go to playback, you have the trim audio just like you had the trim video option. Another option for having it start automatically is under animation. Now under animation, and here's my animation pane, I can click the drop down arrow and choose my effect options, and in this case it opens right to the effect tab, and you can choose where you want it to play uh, from timing. In this case, 12 seconds after the slide starts, then the music or the audio will start. You can also have it stop playing after so many slides or after the current slide. So for example, if you have a, a, a recording, a, a CD type recording, an MP3, you can choose when it starts and after what slide it ends. So you have uh, some flexibility with that. In fact, this used to be the only way you could trim your audio. And uh, so I use this a lot whenever I wanted to add music to a PowerPoint presentation. That's all for this time. See you next time.